It's Thursday night, folks. Football is back. The preseason games have begun, and we have some rundown for you. How's Malik Willis looking? Can he actually push for that starting role this season? A lot to talk about what's going on with the pass catchers in New England. And what are we looking for from the preseason games this weekend today on Locked On NFL Draft? You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I'm your host, former NFL and AFL Divas of Bag, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy, from not just Rogue Analytics, but Locked On Chiefs as well. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day and let you know that you can find him on Twitter at Ryan Tracy NFL. And also, you can find me on Twitter at Eric underscore Crocker. We got some football, Ryan. We got some football, <laughs> and we're recording this after watching a bunch of the first couple of preseason games. And not, obviously, that's excluding the Hall of Fame game, but New England sure. Patriots, uh, they're taking on the Giants. You have the, the Tennessee Titans taking on the Ravens. And we have some takeaways from some rookies, some guys we've been covering for a while now. And we're going to start with Tennessee's quarterback, rookie quarterback, Malik Willis. And right away, he jumped out. Uh, made a splash play with his legs, running in for a touchdown. He threw a deep ball down the field. It was weird coverage, too, because it was like bracket coverage, but the underneath guys, so they had like two climbing routes, right? They had mm-hmm. an uh, underneath kind of drag. And listen, for you offensive gurus, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of this concept. I apologize. <laughs> but they had one guy underneath, kind of, you know, a deep, uh, kind of mid to deep crosser. Then they had a deeper one, and they had a corner who was running with the deeper one. They also had a safety, it looked like maybe Tony Jefferson running with that one. So there was like this bracket. But then last second, the corner peeled off to cover the shorter one, which was wide open. But Malik Willis was thinking, nope, I'm going deep. He threw a bomb. It was on the money. Uh, Perfect touch on it. A very easy catchable ball. So he had the explosive play through the air, the explosive play with his legs, where he made uh, Kyle Hamilton miss. And also a really good uh, play where he's rolling to his left and he almost had to like jump to stop him, his momentum and then sidearm a ball around the defender uh, to get a completion. So we're talking about a guy who looks like he's starting to settle in at the very least right now and at this stage in his progression. He is a playmaker for sure. Can he do that in the regular season, right? I mean, those are things that people are going to have questions about. But as of right now, if he continues to do these things and kind of show like, hey, I, I can create these type of explosive plays. Is he someone who could potentially push Ryan Tannehill for a starting job? Not to start the season, but maybe if things get a little rocky down the line, you could potentially see him in there. I, I think it would have to get rocky only because there's such a, a history with Ryan Tannehill. I think Mike Vrabel's going to give him a, a long leash. But none of this surprises me other than I haven't heard much about Malik doing this in practice to this point. So clearly he's a gamer. All right, you're going to raise your level of play when you get on the field against an opponent. Good for him. This style of play is exactly what we expected from him when we saw him pre-draft, and I think he's just living up to what we thought his reputation would be, obviously using the legs, but being able to, I think, differentiate between levels of targeting. And if you have a guy that you're getting to play in the middle, good for him for not rushing that throw, for letting that play develop, letting that corner come off, and then put it where he ain't. That, I think, is something that can lead to it. Does he get there this season? I don't know. I, I feel like Tannehill would have to, to stumble a little bit for right. Bramble to pull the plug. Do you? Uh, no, I don't see that happening with him either. And right now, Malik Willis, at halftime, he completed six out of 11 of his passes for 107 yards. So the efficiency pretty much there. He's uh, pushing the ball down the field, made some shorter throws as well. Not as efficient as the guy on the other side. And, and uh, Lamar Jackson did not play in this game. But Tyler Huntley mm. s- completed 16 out of 18 passes for 110 yards and a touchdown. So not as explosive with his completions, but definitely very efficient. A guy that we really like. Remember, they drafted two tight ends in this past draft. But one to rookie, go with Mark Andrews. <laughs> to go with Mark Andrews. And a lot, uh, with Andrews. And a lot of people were thinking like, oh man, like they drafted this guy a little bit higher than that guy. And I'm like, look, 
Isaiah Likely, the only reason why Likely slipped at all was because he didn't run a fast 40 time. Well, right mm -hmm. now he had four receptions for 44 yards. Ah, so, um, you know, he's out there making plays. It's good to see those guys. One name that's not on here just yet, and I'll look to see if maybe I'm just missing it, but Traylon Burks, one reception, four yards. So we'll see how they uh, continue to try to push to get him the ball. That's going to be a, My big uh, something that a lot of people are watching. Yeah, absolutely. My bigger question is going to be how many snaps does he play? And, and is the asthma bothering? Does it look like he can move well and when it's when it's warm now? I think that will probably get easier for him as the season goes on. But when it's hot and sticky out there, that's tough. Yeah, and that would be a game as well because right now as we are recording, they are showing the Patriots game. They will kind of double back. And at 10 p.m. my time, I believe it is, they'll be showing the Ravens game from in its entirety. So we'll be able to mm. get a little bit more takeaway in the field. But I definitely was tuning in from time to time, obviously keeping track of everything, what's going on there. And they got some rookies that are playing good football. One guy I wasn't able to watch, and that's in the next game that we're going to talk about, is Cole Strange. I wanted to focus more on him, but I couldn't because of all these other <laughs> young guys for the New England Patriots. We're going to get to those guys and more next. But first, we want to talk to you about our good friends over at Bet Online, And we want to let you know that Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. And not just big-time games. Look, I'm over here on Twitter right now, putting out some over-unders. I'm betting on player props, all that good stuff. And you can, too, right now on Bet Online. It doesn't matter what game that you want to bet on right now. Cleveland Browns, Jacksonville Jaguars. They got Cleveland at minus one and a half. You're going to put some money on that. You know, they got all these games ready for you right now. Let's see. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, they have them minus two and a half. All right, minus two and a half against the Green Bay Packers. You have a big-time battle with uh, Trey Lance and Jordan Love in that game. So, Bet Online, that's the place to get all of those right now. And it continues to be the number one online source for all your sports wagering, information, and live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They got you covered with all of it. All right. Head over right now today to use your mobile advice, device or learn more about the action that's happening today at Bet Online, where the game starts. We want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day and continue to kind of talk about some of these young guys around the league that are finally getting to play, man. I, I feel like training camp, It's it's been a long time coming, right? Training camp took forever. Mm. And it's like, dude, just get us to these games. We want to see these young guys play. We want to see everything we've been hearing about, right? Because there's been a lot of hype. There's been a lot of talk about guys. But you mentioned one thing. I haven't heard a lot about Malik Willis in practice. How is he doing? Well, another guy that we haven't heard a whole lot about was Tyquan Thornton, receiver for the New England Patriots. But they definitely early and often put an emphasis on getting the ball to Tyquan Thornton. Now, remember, Tyquan Thornton was the fastest receiver at the combine, ran in the four twos out of Baylor. He's a, a, a lot of times when you see these speedsters, they are guys who – Maybe you can't get in and out of breaks. A lot of people mm -hmm. believe that they're kind of more so one-trick ponies. And you start to try to figure out, okay, how can they utilize this guy? Well, they went him early and often. Now, the Patriots, they didn't play any of their big dog receivers. So, Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Henry, uh, none of those guys played at all. So, it gave guys like Thornton a big-time opportunity to get the, all the shine, to get all the opportunities. And... It looked like Tyquan Thornton took advantage of that. They targeted him early and often uh, right away down the right sideline on the first drive. He beat a defensive back. The ball was slightly underthrown by Brian Hoyer. I do believe that Thornton potentially could have attacked the ball at his highest point to give mm -hmm. himself more of an opportunity to catch the ball but or even potentially get a pass interference, draw a pass interference call. None of those happened. The defensive back was able to recover and break up the ball. Well, they didn't stop there. They threw a slot fade to him, and you saw that they were there was a lot of intention to really push the ball vertically downfield and use his speed. But where he did shine as well is in the red zone, where he beat a defensive back. They were throwing at that DB a lot, and he ended up scoring a touchdown on kind mm. of a broken play. So uh, a lot of action early on for Tyquan Thornton. And now my question to you is, do you think that there's a chance where he can kind of Carve out a role for himself because, again, you know who the guys are. Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers. Can he throw himself 
in that group and say, you know what, one of you guys are going to have to get out of here. I need my plays. I need my opportunities on the field. I think if he is going to be able to do it, it is by going through this process right here. It being in a situation where he can be the guy that they're trying to push targets to. I didn't think that he had the ability to compete with those guys that have been on rosters before as a rookie. I, I thought he would be a supplemental player that can come in in situations, maybe have you know a pass designation for the routes that they feel he has the best advantage on. Maybe it's it's a, a matchup on a per game basis that they feel they could take advantage of as well. But if that's not the case, if you have to go get more production, why not? He's got the physical tools. Crash course him. Get him to where you need him to be. Get the recognition points. I, I think he's got the physical ability. I think it is really about understanding what his quarterback needs in order to make himself the target that they need him to be. I, maybe he can push through that. I I hope that it can too. Yeah, so, so far, and again, I'm I'm kind of hyping him up because that's a guy who, you know, they drafted <laughs> first, right? They drafted him in the second round. You definitely know about the speed and how they plan on utilizing him. But there's also another guy who, Christian Wilkerson, and we'll see how they end up utilizing him. But uh, so far in this game against the New York Giants, three receptions, 53 yards. So we talked about a lot about Tycon Thornton and, and really the intention to push the ball vertically. But Wilkerson, that was another guy that they showed the intention to push the ball vertically with. And they're doing a lot of this with Bailey Zappi at quarterback now. And Bailey Zappi, that was your guy. So oh, first, yeah. talk to us a little bit about your scouting report on Bailey Zappi. And then we'll talk about maybe how his game is translating to the NFL right now. My, my The biggest strengths that I saw for him, and again, I didn't get to watch his first couple of years. It's just one season at, at Western Kentucky. Right. But the way that he was, he had good pocket presence. He processed quickly. He delivered the ball quickly. He was good at making decisions. That's the number one thing that when he steps up to this level that I, I want to make sure to check off the box is, is he getting overwhelmed? Is the, is the game too complex for him at this level right now? And how quickly can he get back to that guy that receives the ball, did a lot of shotgun snaps, Receive the ball, take a step, get it out of his hands. Can he hit that kind of rhythm and find that that cadence in the NFL? That's what I think that he is. Not the strongest arm, not a guy that's going to hit, you know, the, the outside shoulder throws on the opposite hash every day, but he's got to work within the offense. I think he has a little bit of creativity with him as well. So if the play breaks down, what can he do for you? I think there's more there than what we saw on film and maybe what a lot of teams were really estimating for him. But I haven't been able to see the feed. How does he look? So right now he's completed 11 out of 18 passes. So they're definitely uh, throwing the ball a lot. And they are pushing the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. One thing that jumped out right away for me was the, the, the location is good. You can definitely see a difference in the way the ball comes out of his hand with the arm strength as opposed to some of these other guys in the NFL that are starting NFL quarterbacks. Yep. So – Will the arm strength somehow hinder him? Again, if the location is, is fine on his throws, he, maybe he'll be all right. But right now, you could see kind of a little bit of floating in his passes. You could see kind of like that kind of loopiness where it's not just like driving and there's not that zip or that power in some of his throws. Will that be something that continues uh, as we continue to watch him throughout the preseason and whenever he gets an opportunity? Uh, right now, one of the things that they said was, well, he came in, he's very heady, he knows exactly where to go with the ball, he understands, you know, kind of what he's seeing from defenses, et cetera, and it's like, man, it sounds a lot like Mac Jones, right? And mm -hmm. now, Mac Jones, I believe, has a little bit better arm talent. Again, you won't confuse Mac Jones for a power thrower, but he definitely right. has enough. Zappy is definitely a step below that. How will we overcome it? Will it just be someone who, hey, well, my location is good enough, my timing is good enough, and I'm like Peyton Manning at the end of his career, where <laughs> Peyton, and it's getting, I'm making a joke, it's not to that extent, but Peyton Manning was someone who, you know, he could barely throw the ball 30 yards down the field, and if he did, he had to almost throw it right when the receiver released off the line just so that he could get there because there wasn't as much zip. So uh, I'm curious to see how he kind of uh, plays through this because there is a difference between playing at Western Kentucky and the teams that he was going up against and the way the ball had to come out your hands as opposed to the NFL, with the timing and how tight the coverage is. Yeah, and I think it is something as well that he could probably grow into because there were some big throws on his film. Like he has a, a little bit extra oomph, and I wonder if it is just the whole thing about being under fire as, as a rookie. Let's see how he develops. He's got a few more games to go.
And for the rest of this weekend, there will be a few more games being played as well. We're going to dive into some of those games and who will be looking to see show out from this rookie class when we come back. So, Ryan, Kansas City Chiefs, their rookies are playing. And we just talked a little bit about some of the guys to look out for when we have Rob Rang on. And you gave me a nice little nugget before we started recording. So what do you know about rookie McDuffie out of Washington? Trent McDuffie's transition to the NFL maybe might have, I don't know. I would say it's probably the toughest one of the cornerback group, certainly the, the first rounders, right? Because Trent played 18% man in college. And Spags wants to run 60, 70, 80% man, if he can. As much as Spags can get away with, he will call that. And Trent has made what has been very nice, steady, slow progress until about the last three, four days of practice. The pads came on. He rose, he rose his game to another level. And he is now into the technique. Dick Merritt's been working with him quite a bit. He looks the part. He is going to be the starting outside corner for them, and they're going to run a ton of man. And he's made the transition enough that they're comfortable with Trent McDuffie being their number two behind LeJarrius Sneed, who's actually going to play in the slot because that's their, his best role at this point. So they're looking for their third corner. But on the outside, it's going to be the rookie from UW. Now, talk to us a little bit about this running back because he looks like Tyreek Hill a little bit in that number 10 uh, lineup in the backfield right now. Uh, uh, Isaiah Pacheco, right? Did I say that right? Yep, you got it. So so he's the guy who's really been kind of turning heads. Uh, I'm watching clips of him being terrific in pass protection, picking up blocks on blitzers. Uh, he's running the ball well. What are you expecting to see or trying to see out of Pacheco when they take the field Saturday? It's going to be really interesting because, like you said, one of the, the check marks for Andy Reid is you got to be able to pass protect if you're going to get in the ball game as a young player, not even as a rookie. If you can't pass protect as a running back by your third year, you're out. See ya. So he was well ahead of that, and that really like helped him get there. The thing is, is they've been playing around with where they line him up and who gets who's, how many reps with the ones between Pacheco, the veteran Jarek McKinnon, who's going to be, I think, a postseason kind of like stash. They're not going to give him a, a heavy volume early. But it's Rojo that's in competition with the rookie Pacheco. And Pacheco is a guy that I thought he looked for contact a little too much in college. He didn't. He, he had the ability physically to veer away from things, and he, he kind of like enjoys the contact. So one of the, the transitions that I was looking for him is can you actually learn to, to read and use your vision more to get away from possible contact, not play through it? And that's something that he is working on, and it's been very successful in practice. We'll see what happens against opponents. There are obviously a bunch of other games going on as well, and there are standout rookies that we want to see or guys that we are expecting to have some type of impact potentially early or fight for spots right now in Carolina. There's a quarterback competition, not between Matt Corral and the other guys. You got Sam Darnold. You have uh, Baker Mayfield. But Matt Corral will be taking the field against the Washington Commanders, and also there will be another quarterback on that same field as well, Sam Howell. So uh, are you looking to see anything from those guys? I mean, Sam Howell maybe has an opportunity to overtake Carson Wentz, not early on, but almost like the Malik Willis situation, maybe a little bit later in the season if there you know, is it some type of kind of drop-off in quarterback play. But Matt Corral, Sam Howell, what are you expecting to see from those guys? I, I think they both have it tough with two quarterbacks in front of them because I don't think Tyler Heineke is going to get out of the way even if, if Carson Wentz does falter. So, like, I do think that that's, that's a bit of a competition, too. But for both these guys, starting tonight – or, I'm sorry, tomorrow night, this is their time to shine to show, hey, I need more reps with the ones. I need more reps, even with the twos. As I understand it, Corral's getting very few reps with the twos, even. And that makes it more difficult to progress. And we all knew that he had progression ahead of him in his game. So, I think this is great that they're going to get the reps and hopefully – uh, you don't need to see much from, from Mayfield. I don't think you need to see much from Wentz. So there should be plenty of reps to go around. If they can make the most of it, I think they can earn themselves some more time with the twos. And, and that would be really interesting to me. The heineke Darnold battle back with the rookies. I think that's that's fairly intriguing. Yeah, Friday evening, there's another, there's another game that has some uh, big-time players in there as well. You have uh, – you get to see uh, Hutchinson, rookie. Aiden Hutchinson out of De uh, with Detroit, out of Michigan. And on that same field, you'll see Desmond Ritter. So is that something you're looking forward to seeing as well? I mean, you've been really high on Desmond Ritter, his potential to 
maybe get on the field and unseat Marcus Mariota again. I don't think that it's something that's going to happen right away, but maybe potentially down the line if Atlanta is not really playing for much after you know midway through the season. I still feel like all the things that we were concerned about with Ritter is still being worked on. Like, you know, alignment with his lower body, making sure that he's accurate on release and those kind of things. That's clearly still a work in progress. So the question becomes, is, is can he outplay Marcus Mariota? That, that's going to be the question. Mentally, he seems to have it on lockdown and he's good to go. So I think, again, when the real bullets fly here, even though it is preseason, it is a step up in competition from what they've seen in practice, which was a step up from what they had in college. I still expect Desmond Ritter to, to play before midseason. How's that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So not not much expectation for uh, quarterback Marcus Mariota. And a last game we kind of want to touch on a little bit. Some players, not even so much the rookies, which I am excited to see Spencer Burford, who's starting at right uh, right guard for the San Francisco 49ers. But you got these two quarterbacks, Jordan Love, Trey Lance. A lot of people are trying to figure out what's going to happen with those guys. Def- clearly not rookies. Jordan Love going into his third year, Trey Lance going into his second year. But is that something you'll be keeping an eye on? Because I know, you know, you're like, man, that's the NFC. Doesn't really have much to do with the Kansas City Chiefs or the AFC West at all. But uh, just an intriguing storyline for two guys getting to start uh, this Friday evening. Well, it's funny. We had a, a piece on NFL33.com by, by some of my staff about looking at that that progression. And yes, we care about the NFC too. It's all good. But for me, it's about who settles into their new role. And for Jordan, I think it's very important. Like, can he act as though, Hey, if Aaron Stubbs is toe tomorrow, I got this, you know, like, can he put that confidence level out there and actually perform? I haven't seen that when he's been on the field so far. And for Trey, I think there was so much that, was probably just like drinking from a water hose last season, right? So you're now a professional for a year. Where have you taken it when you step on the field, when you know you have now a rookie class behind you and you are leading that offense and it's yours? I think that that confidence boost, I'm hoping that it's very visible on the field. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm really intrigued by Trey Lance. You know, uh, a lot of people have kind of brought up because he had early training camp, I guess, struggles. He'd have a solid practice. And then an up and down practice, and then a solid practice, and then maybe even a bad practice, and then a solid practice, and he kind of continued that for maybe the first eight practices or so, and then I'd say four out of the last five practices have been pretty strong. He had one really yep. bad one on Sunday, followed that up with maybe his best, but four out of the last five practices were good. A lot of people referencing some of the things that uh, Patrick Mahomes went through his first year starting that first uh, training camp where he had like seven interceptions and six practices and people were talking about some accuracy issues and he kind of dealt with that early on when did you see that light bulb kind of go off for Patrick Mahomes to where it started to really click and then obviously I mean you know drastic situation where he turned into an MVP but where what were they seeing early on and then when did that transition happen to where he's like you know what I get it now they, they did a really good job of, of kind of working through that in camp. So you didn't see a ton of it. But the first, I think it was three weeks of the season, he still had some iffy plays. I, I think he got saved a little bit um, by some defenders who didn't come down with the ball. I mean, they're playing defense for a reason. No offense, DBs. <laughs> but, uh, like, he got help with that, right? But I think after that, week four or five is where he settled out and he smoothed it. And then you started to see the player that he was becoming. That's about what I'd love to see that for Trey. If he can get that much, get 16 quarters under his belt and be ready to roll, I think that would be awesome. I think that he can do that myself. And I got a question for you because there's two rookie uh, pass rushers in in for the Cardinals in Arizona that I'm really looking forward to under the tutelage with JJ there. Like, can they put together and give that pass rush to the Cardinals that they need? Have you heard anything or do you like anything about those guys out in Arizona? I haven't heard anything just yet out of them. I will check into our Locked On resident Cardinals uh, guy there so we can learn more about what uh, Thomas is doing and Malone is doing. Malone, obviously, out of Western Kentucky, edge rusher. I was the guy who was like, "Eh, is he more of just more of a 4-3 outside linebacker who potentially can rush, kind of be a poor man's version of uh, Michael Parsons where, you know, if he needs a rush, he can. Obviously, Parsons does it at an extremely high level. Cam Mm -hmm. Thomas, someone who... Is going to have to learn to be able to win more with, you know, technique than just kind of the power, which he tried to do at uh, San Diego State. It was like more power uh, and effort. 
right? Like that's not going to be consistent at the next level to really be able to win week in and week out, especially in the MC West. You got to go up against guys like Trent Williams uh, twice a year. So we will have to reach out to those guys in Arizona and see and listen in on more about what's going on with those guys. But uh, I guess not hearing anything is better than hearing something that's really bad. <laughs> true, true. They're all coming for you guys in San Francisco, man. I know they are, man. And we are coming for you guys five days a week right here locked on the NFL Draft. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, you got locked on Chiefs with my guy, Ryan Tracy. You got locked on 49ers with myself and Brian Peacock. But I hope you have a great time this weekend watching a lot of these games. We'll see you all Monday. Peace.